Okay, for Unit 5, Day 4, we're going to be talking about right triangles now, specifically after we've spent all this time learning about radicals, learning how to use the Pythagorean theorem. Now we're going to focus on a couple of special, very specific right triangles. So if you look in this picture, you see that this is indeed a right triangle because you have a 90 degree angle there. You should also notice that I have two sides being marked as congruent here, which means we happen to have an isosceles triangle going on. Now, with isosceles triangles, one thing we learned in our last unit was that if you have two congruent sides in a triangle, then the two opposite angles have to also be congruent. And if this angle is 90 and a whole triangle is 180, that leaves 90 degrees to be shared equally between these two angles. So they must each be 45 degrees. So now we have what is called a 45, 45, 90 right triangle. And you're just going to want to memorize for now to keep with you for the rest of the entire school year that when you have an isosceles triangle that is a right triangle, that it's always going to be 45 degrees, 45 degrees, and 90 degrees within that triangle. Now, since we have a right triangle, we know that the Pythagorean theorem would work. And so when we set that up, remember that the hypotenuse across from that right angle always gets the letter C. Okay? That's always just what your hypotenuse gets. And in general, your longest side always gets the letter C, even if it's not a right triangle. And so we've got this here. And so what we're going to discover then is that in this triangle, if you used the Pythagorean theorem on this one, let's just play like this side was a length of x. That would make this side also have to be a length of x. And if we use the Pythagorean theorem on it, we would get that x squared plus x squared would have to equal whatever c squared was. And so when you add the x squared and the x squared, that's going to give you 2x squared equaling c squared. Now to get this CL by itself, to find out how long it is in terms of x, I'm going to square root there. And those will cancel out and I'll get just c. But if I square root it on the right, you're supposed to square root it on the left. So I have to square root over here. And then we just learned how to simplify radicals. When I square root the x squared, that's a perfect square and that x is going to come out. But the root 2 doesn't simplify, so it's going to stay there. And what we have discovered then by doing this is that no matter what this leg happens to be, the hypotenuse is always going to equal that number times the square root of 2. And so that gives us a pattern we can always remember for our 45, 45, 90 triangles. And what I like to do, and what we're teaching in this unit, is that you can set up a little chart for this. So you say, I've got a 45 degree angle, I've got a 45 degree angle, and I've got a 90 degree angle. Okay? And that 45 degree angle is going to be across from one of the legs. And this 45 degree angle will be across from the other leg. And they are going to be the same length since the angles are the same size. And then for the 90 degree angle, the side opposite it, the hypotenuse, is always going to be the length of that leg times the square root of 2. Now, for purposes of clarity, I tend to like to keep the word leg here. But you can just use whatever number you have in it. So another way of writing this chart, if you don't want to have to write out leg each time, is to say if I have a 45, 45, 90 triangle, I can say I know that one of the legs could be any length, but then the other leg has to be the same length. And then the hypotenuse always has to be that length that the first two sides were, but longer. It has to be times the square root of 2. And so you can set up in either one of these leg, uh, charts here to figure out what's going on. So to put that into usage, to see how that's going to help us out, and it lets you avoid having to do this Pythagorean theorem work every single time you see this particular special right triangle. If you know that 45, 45, 90 triangles always have this relationship between the side lengths, you can skip all the work and just use the relationship you know. So you look at this first picture and you go, okay, 
I've got a 90, and I've got a 45. Knowing how to subtract from 180, that means this guy is also 45. I could have also looked at, wow, I have two congruent sides here. And since they were congruent, I must have had an isosceles right triangle, which still gives me a 45-45. And so I can throw this into that chart here and say, okay, I've got a leg and a leg and a leg times the square root of 2. So let's plug in the numbers that I know from this picture. Well, I know one of the legs has to be 8. So you can put that in. And, oh, wait, the other leg is also 8. I could either have seen that from the picture and filled it in, or I could have just known that both legs better be the same size. So now to find this third guy, I know I need to take the length of that leg and multiply it by the square root of 2. So I'm going to take this length, 8, and multiply it by the square root of 2, and that is now the length of the side opposite the 90 degrees. So coming back to my picture now, that side opposite the 90 degrees is y. I now know that y equals 8 times the square root of 2. No Pythagorean theorem needed. And as you get better at this and have it more memorized, for ones that are very obvious like this, you won't even need to write the chart. Although I still highly recommend it because mistakes happen and it's always good to have a record of what was going through your head. Another example now. You look at this picture and yet they didn't tell me the angles. They just told me that it is a right triangle, so I know this guy's 90. So I wonder if it's a special right triangle. And oh look, yes indeed, I have two congruent sides here. So this must be a 45, 45, 90. Notice that I t am writing those in each time. Seeing it in the picture is going to help solidify it in your mind. So you go, okay, let's throw down my chart real quick. It only takes a second. So you've got a leg and a leg and a leg times the square root of 2. Now, okay, what are my legs? Well, one of them here is 3 times the square root of 2. This other guy is also 3 square roots of 2. So now to get the hypotenuse here, I'm going to have to take that leg length, which is 3 root 2, but now I'm going to have to multiply it by another square root of 2. So you've got your leg length right here, which you stole from the other column, but it still has to get multiplied by the square root of 2. So when you work that out, conveniently, we just learned how to multiply radicals, and so you should be able to work out that the root 2 times root 2 is root 4, and the 3 goes in there, and then simplifying root 4, you have just a 2, which multiplied by the 3 gives you 6 for this hypotenuse. So now you can take that 6, come back over here, find where your hypotenuse is, and say that m equals 6. Coming now to example 3, the difference you see in this one is that you do not know how big the legs are, except for the fact that they are indeed the same length. They are both x. So I know that, okay, this better be a 45, 45, 90 right triangle. Since this is already 90 degrees, these both have to be 45. And if you couldn't figure out in your head how to do this and you didn't want to use the Pythagorean theorem, you could drop it into your chart and think, okay, I've got a 45 and a 45 and a 90. And so I don't know either of these legs, but I know that the hypotenuse, which you get by doing the leg times the square root of 2, is equal to 5 times the square root of 2. And what we have to figure out now is how to work backwards and figure out what a leg by itself is. And to do that, I'm going to use the fact that the chart tells me that both of these things are the lengths of the side of the hypotenuse. So I know that the leg length times the square root of 2 gave me equaled this number, 5 root 2. Well, I just want to know a leg by itself. And to get rid of this times square root of 2, I'm going to divide square root of 2 on both sides, just like you learned in algebra. And so you can take this now, cancel out, root 2 divided by root 2 is just 1, so I have 1 leg. On this side, root 2 divided by root 2 is also just the number 1, and so your leg length is 5. So you could drop both of those into your chart, 
you could come over here and put it on your picture, and now you know how long all three sides are without ever touching the Pythagorean theorem. For problem four, you start to panic a little bit because you say, wait a minute, that's a square. We know it's a square because, oh look, it's got four congruent sides and it's got a right angle here in the corner. But then you notice that, wait a minute, that diagonal taken with these two sides of the square makes a right triangle. And not only does it make a right triangle, but it makes an isosceles right triangle. So this should be a 45, 45, 90 right triangle. And so I can work this the same way I worked this one over here and just focus on the diagonal of this square. And so I'm going to set up my chart here that helps me keep things organized. This just helps you avoid mistakes if you have things written out. And see, so okay, here, what do I have? I have the side opposite the 90 is length 8. So my hypotenuse is 8. So I'm going to come here to the 90 slot and drop in that 8. And you think, okay, I need to get just a leg. And they don't tell me. But I know that my leg times the square root of 2 equaled 8. So something times that square root of 2 gave me 8. And I'm going to try and find out what that something is. And so let's get rid of the square root of 2 that's multiplied on it so that we get just a leg by itself. And I'm going to go ahead and just write the fraction 8 over root 2 is the length of my leg. That is an exact answer. But the problem with it is, it is not simplified. We do not like radicals to be on the bottom. So you have to figure out how do I get rid of that radical on the bottom. And that's when you're going to use your special one. You are going to use the radical on top and bottom to destroy your radical. You pick that on purpose because once you have two of the same thing on the bottom, that's going to give you a perfect square there. So 8 times root 2 is 8 root 2. Root 2 times root 2 is root 4. But the square root of 4, that's one of those perfect squares you memorized. That is just a plain old 2. And so now you have this fraction. And your radical is nice and simplified now. But now you have the slight problem of you always need to check your fraction. And 8 over 2 simplifies into 4 over 1, or just the number 4. And then that root 2 that was tagging along gets to just hang out there on the side. So now I have a leg is equal to 4 times the square root of 2. And if you're suspicious about whether or not you've reduced it correctly and if you've gotten the correct answer, you can always go back and check your numbers. You can take something and go, okay, I want to know if I take this and multiply it by the square root of 2, does it really get me back to 8? So if you decide you want to check it, you can come down into the corner or something and go, is... 4 root 2 times root 2, remember this is the number you got for your leg, and this is the root 2, we're going to test and see if that really gives us the 8. And so you go 4 times root 2 times root 2 is root 4, root 4 is just a 2, and 4 times 2 is indeed that 8. So you know you found the right number for the length of your leg. Okay, so always being able to check your answers is always a big comfort because then you're not wondering if you did things right or not. So that's your isosceles right triangles, 45, 45, 90. Turning the notes over, we have what's called a 30, 60, 90 relationship. And so to show you about this one, I'm going to have an equilateral triangle. And you said, wait a minute, that has nothing to do with right triangles. But trust me on this one. We're going to have an equilateral triangle, which means that the three sides are all the same length. And I'm going to say that they're 2x, excuse me, 2x and 2x for the length of this whole side right there. Okay? And then you think, okay, an equilateral triangle implies that I have an equiangular triangle. So this angle is 60, this angle is 60, and that angle is 60. And you're thinking, well, yeah, I know that. Let's learn something new. So then I tell you, let's drop the altitude of that triangle. And remember from our last unit, altitudes go from a vertex and are perpendicular to the opposite side. 
So now we have an altitude here. Now let's think about what it means to be an altitude. An altitude is going to be perpendicular, which means this angle is 90 degrees. So I have a 90 degree angle here. Now I'm going to focus on just this blue half of our equilateral triangle. How do I know it's a half of the equilateral triangle? Well, I know that any time you have an altitude that also goes through a midpoint, it's going to be a perpendicular bisector, an altitude, a median, and an angle bisector. It's all those things at once. Okay? And so over here is a version of that blue triangle set off to its side over here. And so we have that 90 degree angle here, and then we have this 60 degree angle in the corner. Well, you know how to do math. If triangles always have 180 degrees, that means this little piece of this 60 degree angle, this right side of it, should only be 30 in order to add up to 180 degrees for this whole triangle here. So this triangle has the special relationship of being 30, 60, 90. Okay? And that is another special relationship. It doesn't have a fancy name like isosceles right triangle did with your 45, 45. But it is another one of our very, very special right triangles. And to show you that, let's look at some of the relationships we have in here. Now, you heard me say a minute ago that if your altitude comes down here, it's perpendicular, it's going to go through a midpoint. So this spot right here was the midpoint of the base of that um, equilateral triangle. Well, if the whole side was 2x, then this side has to be 1x, and this side has to be 1x. So now I'm going to bring those numbers over here. This equilateral side right here was 2x. So bringing it over here, that side is still 2x. This bottom half of the equilateral triangle was a single x. And so I'm going to put that single x right there. And now I'm going to try and find what is this altitude length right here. Okay. And so let's try and figure it out. Well, I know that since it's a right triangle, that this 2x is my hypotenuse. And so I can put the numbers for a right triangle into the Pythagorean theorem. Let's call our altitude A, A for altitude, and let's set up the Pythagorean theorem. I'm going to have A squared plus this other guy is X squared, and I know they're not the same length because 30 and 60 are not the same size angles. 30 is smaller, and so the x side is smaller. 60 is bigger, so the a side is even bigger. And of course, the biggest side is always your hypotenuse, which is going to be the 2x, which gets squared. Working this out, a squared plus, what's x squared? Well, it's just x squared. 2x squared, the 2 gets squared and becomes a 4. The x gets squared and becomes an x squared. And when you subtract that out, you get a squared equals 3x squared. But I don't want a squared. I want just plain a. So I need to square root both sides. And the squares and the square root cancel out. And you're left with just a, the altitude, equaling the square root of x squared is just going to be a plain old x. And then the root 3 is left behind in the radical. So this sets us up another special pattern that you can see for these 30, 60, 90 right triangles. And so I'm going to show that one to you here. If I set up a chart for my 30, 60, and 90 right triangles, we know that since we have three different side angles, one of them is always going to be the shortest. The side opposite 30 is always going to be the shortest side. And so I'm going to show you that with just the letters SH. That's my short side is opposite the 30 degree angle. Opposite your 60 degree angle is going to be your middle child, the medium length guy. That's this one we just found, but we just, you know,
I'm going to call, that's the medium one. We got that one by taking your short one times the square root of 3. And so this middle child here is always the length of your short side multiplied by the square root of 3. No matter what number you had in here, this one will always be that same number times the square root of 3. For your hypotenuse, we're going to get that one. Oh, look, my short side was a plain x. My hypotenuse is twice as big. So my pattern tells me that if I know my short side, the hypotenuse is always going to be 2 times that short side. If you want to put it in the numbers that we had here, for my 30, 60, and 90, my shortest one with the smallest number was x. The 60 degree angle was opposite the medium sized one, which was x root 3. And your hypotenuse was across from the one that was 2 times x. Yes, you do definitely want to memorize this relationship that the 30, 60, 90 triangle has. The angles are 30, 60, 90. The side lengths always have these relationships. The short one, the middle child is the short side times the square root of 3. And the hypotenuse will always be twice the length of the short one. So when you come down to the examples to see this in action, you look at this first example and you go, OK, this is the hypotenuse. That one's C. It's going to be my longest one. My 60 degree side, which I don't know, is A. I also don't know how long the one across from the 30 degree angle is. And yes, I highly recommend you draw the arrows to help you not switch within your own brain what number went with which angle. And so you set up your chart. I've got a 30, 60, 90 triangle. And I'm going to have a short side, a short side that's going to be multiplied by the square root of 3 to give me my middle child, and then 2 times the short side to give me the hypotenuse. Which of these pieces do I know from the picture? I know the hypotenuse is 16. And so to figure out what the other ones are, I go, well, I know that 2 times my short side equaled 16. Maybe in your head you can already figure out how big the short side is. But if you can't, you can set up an equation. I know that 2 times the short side equaled 16. So I can divide by 2 on both sides and the short side must equal 8. And you can plug it in there. And then I can take this and go, now wait a minute, my middle length side is going to take that short side and multiply it times the square root of 3. So I'm going to put, OK, what goes in for my short side? The 8 does. And it gets multiplied by the square root of 3 to give me 8 root 3. Now I can take those numbers back and come put them in the picture. The one opposite 30 is 8. So here's my 30 degree angle. I come across from there and it turns out B equals 8. And the side opposite the 60 degree angle, here's the 60, go across. The side opposite is going to have a length of 8 root 3. Each of these gets done in a similar manner. As long as you can make your chart, you can work around to figure out what the other parts are based on this special relationship between the lengths of the sides of a 30, 60, 90. Okay, so let's look at that and go, I have a 30 degree angle here. I have a 90 degree angle here. So this one must be a 60. And so now I've got one of my special 30, 60, 90 triangles. And I'm just going to go ahead and draw my chart right now. And I'll know that I have a short side, a short side times the square root of 3, and 2 times the short side. And let's see which piece they gave me. Well, I don't have the hypotenuse. I don't have the middle child. So the only one I have is the side opposite the 30, which will be the square root of 3. That means to find my middle length, I'm going to have to take that short side times the square root of 3. Well, how big is my short side? It's already the square root of 3. So now I'm going to have to multiply two radicals to get the length of the medium-sized side. Root 3 times root 3 is root 9, and the square root of 9 
happens to be 3. For the hypotenuse now, I'm going to take 2 times whatever that short side was. But again, that short side is just root 3. So I can plug it into my chart, and 2 times the square root of 3 gives me 2 square roots of 3. And now let's go find where they go in the picture so I don't accidentally call them the wrong thing. So the one opposite the 60 should be 3. I'm going to find my 60 degree angle, go across, and it turns out D is equal to 3. The hypotenuse opposite the 90 is 2 root 3. Here's my hypotenuse, so it equals 2 root 3. For this guy now, let's see what I've been given. Oh, for the first time I'm being given the side opposite a 60 degree angle. I don't know the length of my hypotenuse, and since it's 60 and 90, I know this is 30, and I don't know how long that short side is going to be. Please notice, you cannot trust the picture on which side is going to be the shortest side or not, because this side looks like it's shorter than the side M. But because this says 60 degrees right here, you just have to play along and go, okay, if this is 60, this is 9, and this is 30, can't trust the picture, trust the numbers. This is 30 degrees, so this must M must be the shortest side. So I'm going to go ahead and set up this chart and say that I'm going to need a short side, a short side times the square root of 3, and 2 times my short side. I want to remind myself of that relationship each and every time. And so I'm going to go, the piece that I have is that opposite the 60, I have the number 9. So here in my 60 column, we're going to put in the number 9. Now it would be great to find the, how long 2 times the short side is, but in order to do that, I need to know what a single short side is. So I'm going to have to somehow use this to find my short side. To do that, I'm going to use what's in the chart. I know that the short side times the square root of 3 was given to me to be 9. Let's work backwards and get the short thing by itself. Well, short times the square root of 3, I'm going to divide the root 3 off of both sides. And my short side is going to equal 9 over the square root of 3. Which, as soon as you see it, you should be panicking and realizing I can't leave it that way. I can't have a radical in the denominator. So you're going to multiply by root 3 over root 3 to rationalize that denominator. And so your short side is going to be whatever you get here. 9 times root 3 on top. And root 3 times root 3 on the bottom is going to give you a plain old 3. And now, finally, you're almost done. Because now you can simplify the fraction part of that and get that the short side of my triangle is going to equal, what is 9 over 3 simplified? Oh, that comes out to be just the plain number 3. And then your root 3 is going to tag along. So I'm going to have 3 times the square root of 3 as my short side of my triangle here. I could even put that in here right now. Here's my small angle come across to my short side and it's going to equal 3 times the square root of 3, whatever number that happens to be. To get my 90 degree angle side, so the hypotenuse here, I've got to take 2 times whatever my short side was. Well, my short side was 3 root 3, so the hypotenuse is going to come out to be 6 times the square root of 3 when I combine all that together. So I come up here, go opposite the 90 to my hypotenuse, and n is going to equal the 6 times the square root of 3. This example now, once again, I have a right triangle. Double check to see if it's a special one. Oop, I got the 60, so this one should be a 30. So I have a 30, 60, 90 right triangle. So I can come here and say, okay, I have a 30 and a 60 and a 90. So I'm going to have a short side, a medium side that is short times the square root of 3, and the hypotenuse, which is 2 times the short side. Into this, I'm going to put any numbers I have. I have that the side opposite the 60 is 11 times the square root of 3. Now let's see if I can isolate how big the short side is. So I'm going to use this and say, well, my short side times the square root of 3 
equal 11 times the square root of 3. So I need to divide this off to get the short side by itself, but if I divide it on the left, divide it on the right. And the short side ends up being just 11, a plain old number. And so I'm going to drop 11 into there. And then I'm going to come up to my picture, find my short side across from the 30 degree angle, and f equals 11. Well, if the short side is 11, the hypotenuse must be 2 times that short side, which is 2 times 11, and your hypotenuse comes out to be 22. So across from your right angle, e is 22. Last example, and then you get to put this to work in all sorts of real world and non real world problems. I look at this picture. I see that I have a right angle, so I know I have a 90. Let's check if it's one of my special guys. Yep, I have a 60 here. That guy must be 30, and I know I have a 30, 60, 90 right triangle. So I'll have a short side, a medium side that's short root 3 and a hypotenuse that's 2 times the short side. Let's plug in numbers we know. I have a hypotenuse here across from the 90 that's 8 times the square root of 5. So I put that in the hypotenuse column right here. Now I'm going to use this to figure out this is twice my short side. I need just the short side. So I'm going to have to work that out and see what it is. So I'm going to come down here and say, okay, 2 times whatever that short side was is equaling 8 times the square root of 5. So to find out how much just the short side is, I need to divide off the 2. But if I divide it on the left, I've got to divide it on the right. Here, those cancel out to make 1 short side. And then on this one, conveniently, you learn how to simplify radicals. And 8 over the 2 gives me 4, and then the root 5 doesn't need any more simplifying, so it can just tag along. And now your short side equals 4 times the square root of 5. And I can come over to my picture. Here's my 30 degree angle. So my short side across from it is 4 times the square root of 5. Now to get this last piece, I know that it's equal to whatever my short side is, times the square root of 3. Well, my short side was 4 root 5. So to figure out what all this is together, I'm going to come down here where I have some room and put 4 root 5 and know it's going to be multiplied times the square root of 3. Well, to multiply this, let's do the stuff under the radical. Root 5 times root 3 is root 15. The 4 times the invisible 1 is just a 4. And then you could double check and make sure that 15 has no perfect square factors. It does not. And so now you know that this medium side is 4 times the square root of 15. So now I can come across for my 60 degree angle to letter D and know that it is 4 root 15. Thank you guys very much.